All right, well, welcome to another episode of Friday Fruit Clips. This is where weekly I take a couple of clips, throw it on there, throw some commentary in there to warn you of the false prophets, the false teachers, those who would prey on the simple-minded. Put it all together, and there you go. This is episode number two, so with that, here we go. Now, first up, we have Cindy Jacobs. You can see the title, Prophetic Word for 2022. Look at the views that this video garnered. This is from a year ago. 175,000 people watched this, and that's important, as I'll get back to that in just a second. Now, Cindy's up on stage. She's been on stage less than three minutes. She's about to share a story, and this has to do with tithing. I want to warn you, if you have any pets or animals in the room, you might want to put them out while I play this. They may be triggered by this woman's voice. I've given you warning. Let's take a listen. If you heard of, if you graduated from CFNI, you might have Wayne Myers, incredible man of faith, missionary to Mexico. He was driving through a very difficult part of Mexico. A lot of banditos, very, very challenging. And God gave him a word of knowledge that his son and the Lord that was in the car with him was not a tither. And so he tells this young man, stop the car. And the guy, you know what? So stop the car. And he says, get out of my car. And he's like, you know, pastor, pastor, get out of my car right now. Listen, God showed me you are not tithing, and this is a dangerous area, and I'm not going to die today because you're cursed and you're robbing God. Boy, that was painful. Cindy Jacobs is very manipulative. She has just taught a false doctrine. As she stands up on stage, she tells this story of two men. One is a tither, one is not a tither. The man who is a tither uh, falls into a panic and insists that the car be stopped, wants to separate himself from the non-tither because he thinks that he may be killed at any second by God, you know, become a casualty of war just for being in the presence of a non-tither. She wants you to believe that this is a crime so egregious that God is, you know, foaming at the mouth, seeking out non-tithers to literally kill. And again, this is a false doctrine. There is nowhere in the New Testament where there's any verse that commands or requires Christians to tithe. It's not there. And where it is in the Old Testament, she takes that out of context. I'll save that for another video. But it is a false doctrine. And the reason she's doing it is for filthy lucre's sake. She is greedy. Remember, she's doing this at the beginning of her presentation here. Because she's going to go through and she's going to do personal prophecy for many people who are there. And then at the end, guess what's going to happen? Oh, they're going to take an offering for Cindy Jacobs. And now that she has put this false fear of God into the listener, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to empty their pockets and stuff the coffers for Cindy Jacobs. She's going to get paid. She's going to get paid, and that's why they do this. But notice the wording also. She says, A, that you're robbing God by not giving her your money. And B, you're cursed. You're cursed for not tithing. It is absolute manipulation. She is detestable. He started to be a tither and a giver, and it changed his whole life. So I want to say to you, start this year with the blessing of the Lord and stop robbing God. See, there's that wording again, robbing God. And sadly, 
so many in the audience and so many that have listened to this through the internet believe this, that they're robbing God. Nobody wants to rob God. You know, that, that's a terrible thing. And so she's putting the fear of God into them for all the wrong reasons through a false doctrine that doesn't exist so she can get paid. And again, that wording is atrocious. And stop living in the kingdoms of this earth and switch to the kingdoms of God and God's economy. This is the word of the Lord. You listen to me. Look at that. This is the word of the Lord. You listen to me. Talk about manipulation. It's not the word of the Lord. This woman is as false as one can get. Just terrible. Stay away from Cindy Jacobs. One more thing here. I am not telling anybody not to give. By all means, give. Give to your heart's content. Give as the Lord moves upon you. What I am doing is warning you against Cindy Jacobs, who uses false doctrine to get rich. She uses it for filthy lucre's sake. That's what I'm warning you about. Don't let these bully teachers get up on stage and try to convince you that you're robbing God because you won't give her your money. So just wanted to state that. All right, next up, we've got Jennifer LeClaire Ministries. This was her 2022 prophecy. You can see the title. She's got a pretty good sub count there. So we're going to go through and listen to this. Point this out. Here we go. This, listen closely. If you're listening, say amen. I'm building it up. You better give me a good response. All those people online, they need to be here and you shout. You, you're the forerunners. Notice how she sways back and forth, right? She's, she's building up. She's going to deliver something here. This is all in the performance. Shakata, this is the year. She throws some tongues in there because it sounds good, right? Shakata, this is the year of your upgrade. Come on. This is the year of your upgrade. This is the year of your upgrade. God is going to upgrade you in areas where you don't even think you needed an upgrade. He's going to bring increase. He's going to advance you. He's going to enlarge you. I dare you. Some of you need to start praying the prayer of Jabez because when you do, God is going to bless you indeed. I said it's the year of the upgrade. The devil tried to downgrade you in this past season, and God is saying, no, I myself will reverse the curse. I myself will bring you up to... You know, again, this is a tactic where they start to just rant. They just start to rant, barely taking a breath in. Here comes blessings, 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 and blessings and blessings. And just when you thought you had enough blessings, here comes more blessings, upgrades and blessings. This is manipulation. This is what they do. The other side. You're like, Some of you are going to get on an airplane going home, and they're going to say, wait a minute, excuse me, you just got an upgrade. How would you like to sit in first class, amen? Because you're a first class believer. Because <laughs> you're a first class believer. <laughs> this is just terrible. She starts giving scenarios. You're going to walk onto a plane, and someone's just going to randomly come up to you and say, how would you like to be upgraded to first class? Why? Well, because this is the year of the upgrade. So here we go. Here's a 17-minute video. She starts out, and she rants for 15 minutes. And you might ask, why is she doing what, all these upgrades? Do, does anybody remember getting upgraded in 2022? I flew twice. I didn't get any upgrades, right? Is this only for Jennifer LeClaire followers? Well, I'll tell you, the reason that she's doing this and the reason that she's whipping the crowd up into a frenzy is right here. Before we pray tonight, I want to give you an opportunity to sow an upgrade seed. If you feel led to sow, do it. This is the man. Before we pray tonight, I want to give you an opportunity to sow an upgrade seed. If you That's why you're going to get the opportunity to sow an upgrade seed. Isn't that awesome, people? 
so that upgrade seed. So here she's from beginning all the way up to 14 minutes. Again, frenzies the crowd. Talks about all these blessings, all these stories on how money just magically appeared. And now that you know, according to Jennifer, that this is your year of upgrade, well, here's your chance to sow an upgrade seed. And of course, they do. Just another tactic of manipulation by these wolves. Stay away from Jennifer Leclerc. She's also a certified false prophet, as is Cindy Jacobs. All right, next up, we've got a clip from Elijah Clips. Surprise, surprise, Steve Schultz, who is notorious for providing a platform for false prophets, false dreamers. Uh, this lady is Kim Robinson on the right. She is going to tell her tale of, I guess, meeting Jesus. So here we go. And so people always ask me, whenever I, whenever I see Jesus, what did he look like? So I looked from his robe to him because so I can answer this question. <laughs> yeah. And uh, his face is like if you if you Google the um, Akiana, the little girl that did the painting, she painted or drew Jesus. That's what he looks like. It's just a chiseled face. He's beautiful. He's got the it's just firm and strong and he's just magnificent. And even though he was wearing this this robe, because when I first saw him, the first thing that popped into my mind, because when you're in heaven, you have a soul. So you remember things on the earth. So when I first saw him and I saw all these gems on his robe, I thought th the Glenn Campbell song, the rhinestone cowboy. <laughs> you know, and I thought these are not gemstones and he is no cowboy. This is real. She sees she's in heaven. She sees Jesus. And, and the first she her words. The first thing she thought was Glenn Campbell, rhinestone cowboy, uh, country western performer from the 70s primarily. I think there was a movie made too, right? Rhinestone cowboy. This is the first thing she thought when she saw the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Is this real? And the answer is no, it's not real. Cowboy, <laughs> you know, but that was the first thing I thought of is, you know, because you remember things on the earth. And so when I looked at his face, his face is just magnificent. And he walks with authority. I mean, such a king, authority, you know, and it's just magnificent. And he's strong, even though he's wearing this robe with these gemstones. There is nothing feminine about him. You know, I mean, it's just all. Isn't that an odd statement? Even though he wears these gemstones, there's nothing feminine about him who who would think that why did she feel like she like that was necessary to say that's very odd I, I don't think anybody would ever think that but for some reason she felt it necessary to say that that's just so bizarre all strength and i was looking at his face and you i could see his arm he like showed me his arm which i thought was kind of odd because usually when i see his his arm it's usually he for me, he dresses like in bohemian style clothes, which is like the has like a band and has a big bellowing sleeves, you know. And I don't know why, but that's how I a lot of times see him or even in his pants. They're like the little cuffs on the bottom with the bellowing, you know, legs, except when we go swimming. He doesn't wear that when we go swimming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just shocked. This woman's talking about when Jesus wears pants. That he has cuffs. Oh, but not when he goes swim, when we go swimming. So apparently she's been swimming with Jesus. Boy. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, so I was, he showed me his arm and I was looking at his skin and his skin is just beautiful and his hair is just chocolate brown and it wasn't wispy and it wasn't. Good grief. Look at her. She's getting all hot and bothered over this Jesus, who I, I'm, I'm just going to say this. She did not go to heaven. She did not see the real Jesus. What she's describing, and, and I'll let her continue here, what she's describing is Fabio. What she's describing is her fantasies from a Harlequin romance novel. 
just watch how, watch how she gets all hot and bothered. You, you want to take you want to tell her to go take a shower. Watch this dried out and it you know wasn't woolly it was just beautiful waves of chocolate brown hair and it was a little bit over his shoulder and it was just glistened like he had had a hot oil treatment and you know, Ima <laughs> imagine that it, it it looked like jesus was this chocolate brown wavy hair it's just glistening and it just looked like he just he just done got done with a, a hot oil treatment and it was just glistening chocolate brown hair. It's just she's like closing her eyes, going into fantasy, getting all hot and bothered here. You know, I thought the beauticians would go, Oh yeah, that's hard to do. That's hard on thick hair, you know. <laughs> but it was just beautiful and healthy and it just it was Look at her <laughs> look at her closing her eyes. Look at her closing her eyes in absolute fantasy. This is disturbing. It was just wavy and it was amazing. And his face was just so smooth and shiny. And I, I was looking at his arm and I was looking at his face and I'm like, you don't have any brown spots <laughs> on your face. You don't have any liver spots on your arm. Oh boy. <clears throat> so she was amazed being in heaven. Her thoughts go to well, I'm I'm surprised Jesus doesn't have any liver spots. He doesn't have any aging spots. Is that a a, a sober-minded thought? Is that a, a legitimate thought? Why would anybody be looking for cuz she, she's saying that she's looking for liver spots and she's surprised. Well, Jesus, you don't have any liver spots. Do you know why she had these thoughts? Because she didn't go to heaven. She's lying. And this girl over here is like, oh, was Jesus handsome? Was he rugged with chocolate wavy brown hair and good skin? Hot oil treatments? has cuffs in his pants, except for when he goes swimming. This is ridiculous, isn't it? It's just ridiculous. And, and so why should, this is blasphemy. She's telling a tale that did not happen. And, and again, note, even in the next clip, note the absolute lack of reverence as far as the holiness of God, being in a place of holiness, of reverence, of majesty. It's all about how he personally looked, and she's having, right online, live on the air, actual fantasies about Fabio Jesus, which is not the Jesus of the Bible. Again, I would not be surprised if she just got done reading a Harlequin romance novel. You don't have any liver spots on your arm. You don't have any sun spots, you know? And I thought he has not had any chemical pills. He hasn't had any laser treatment. He doesn't use blemish cream. You know, he is. The, these are all carnal thoughts. Everything about this alleged encounter is all carnal. Nobody would think like this. This is just so insulting. It's so insulting. And, and, and I would argue she's getting other females to, to fantasize about this. The, the things that she's talking about are things that are done on the earth in the carnal world. And quite frankly, even on earth, shouldn't be done by Christian women or Christian men. Chemical peels. I don't, I don't know what else. She's, skin treatments. It's just, it's terrible. So uh, I don't, I've never heard of Kim Robinson, but she's given a platform to discuss this stuff. And it is, it's very damaging, I think, if you, if you listen to this, this type of nonsense. This is nonsense. All right, our last clip. This is something that appeared also on Elijah Clips. The, the man on the left, his name is Jeff Tharp. And he's going to tell his tale of going into heaven. Here we go. 
And so I'd gone to take a, a midday nap, which is legit. Um, especially when you're like, you're, you have time off and you're just kicking it. It's perfect. And so I'd gone to lay down and the second my head hit the pillow, I was in heaven. And it took me a second wow. to realize that I was in heaven because I was like, what in the world is this? Like, it was so vivid. Like I was like, as real as this. Um, and I can feel, I can still feel what it felt like being there. And, mm. and so then I had seen the Lord from afar. He floated down to me like Superman. Cause he knows I love <laughs> Superman. And I was like, dude, nice. And then like, did you hear that? This man child says that he was in heaven. And that Jesus floated down to him like Superman. Because, you know, Jesus knew that he liked Superman. And then he says, dude, nice. Is this, again, the lack of reverence? Is, is there ever a scenario where you would attribute that word, dude, to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings? And the answer is no. It is so irreverent. It is so disrespectful. And these thoughts wouldn't enter your mind. It is just atrocious. Also, let me play this again. Listen to this. Being the Lord from afar, he floated down to me like Superman because he knows I love <laughs> Superman. And I was like, dude. So he says, Jesus with purpose, floated down to him like Superman because Jesus knows that Jeff here likes Superman. That somehow Jesus, wanting to appeal to Jeff's likes, did a search to find out his likes and said, oh, okay, Jeff likes Superman. I know when Jeff comes into heaven here, I am going to float down like Superman. I'm going to be like Superman in order to, what, impress Jeff? As though Jesus would not have been enough or impressive enough that he was going to imitate Superman. Uh, again, this nonsense is so blasphemous. I, I'm just at a loss for words. But you can also know because of these ridiculous statements of nonsense that none of this is true. Nobody would look at Jesus and, oh, dude, nice. Dude, you're my bro. You know, I, I don't care how many waves you've surfed, you know, because this guy reminds me of like a, a surfer dude or something. It, th this didn't happen. And, and look, at, look at this one over here. Oh, yeah, that really happened. That, that sounds just like Jesus. He's always goofing around, floating around like Superman. Jesus likes Superman. It's crazy. Let's let him finish here. Dude, nice. And then like, I was like, that's Jesus. And I had this moment, it took a second, because I was like, that I'm seeing Jesus. But I saw him far enough away that I couldn't quite make out his features. Mm. And then I got enamored by the floor, uh, which I have... So he was looking at Jesus, and then he became enamored with the floor. He took his eyes off Jesus. Is that a thing? I, I don't know. Maybe it is. Well, we know this didn't happen. But he says, again, in a very irreverent way, well, that's enough of Jesus. Hey, look at the floor. So he goes on to talk about the floor. Chronicled on here a couple of times, but the floor had so much depth. I don't know if you have you ever seen any like glimpses of heaven? I have not, no, but it is a desire, and it's been prophesied that I will visit the Lord. Okay. And so she says, I've not been to heaven yet, but it has been prophesied that she too is scheduled for a visit in heaven. And again, this is the generation that we live in. It's all about dreaming fantasy. Everybody's going to heaven. I've got my ticket. How about you? Yeah, I've been prophesied too. Not sure when, but I'm excited. This is just utterly ridiculous. And again, what you want to take away from this is the irreverence. There is no reverence. They're telling tales of superheroes from the big screen. And that's what it is. And 
Is it doing harm? Yes, it is doing harm because everybody just thinks that trips to heaven are, you know, for everybody. And that when you get there, it's pretty much just like what we see here on earth, except for Jesus floating around like Superman. They're, they're attributing superhero, I guess, characteristics to Jesus. And it's just a regular thing. It's as a matter of fact. Oh, it's very disturbing. We're in the book of Isaiah. This is a true encounter with God, as I, Isaiah speaks in chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Here's Isaiah. Look what he says in, in verse 5. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah thought he was going to die when he beheld the Lord. Because when you're in the presence of such perfection and holiness, such majesty as our Lord, this is a proper reaction. You feel like you're going to die. Isaiah recognized his sin immediately. And this is the difference. There were no Superman floaties. There were no thoughts of skin treatments or country cowboy stars like Glenn Campbell, rhinestone cowboy. No cuffed jeans, no adventures in swimming, no Fabio chocolate hair thoughts. This was God Almighty who is far and above all of us. And, and it, again, it's just so sad that we're dealing with this today. But what we can do is recognize the dreamers, recognize the false prophecies, recognize the utter irreverence that these people bestow against God, they don't revere him. So these are tales, these are fantasy stories from people who do not serve the Lord and who, for the most part, make their livings lying in the name of Jesus Christ, whether it's for the praises of men or the attention or filthy lucre. I would encourage you to read your Bible because true stories like this are amazing. And that's what the Word of God does. It causes us to revere God, to stand in awe of Him, to understand that we have a sin problem, and to be in the presence of God is crushing. The good news is, one day He will soon redeem us fully, And that's what we look forward to. But read your Bible and pray and fellowship with God and don't make up stories. And don't just believe these fantasy stories because as far as I can tell, the vast majority are absolutely false and they only serve to harm the body of Christ. Telling tales about a God who is not the God of our Holy Bible. So read, pray serve Jesus in truth and sincerity and sober-mindedness. Until next week.